I'm Julian Assange, editor of WikiLeaks. We've exposed the world's secrets. Come on, fire! Well, I'm concerned about the disclosure of sensitive information from the battlefield that could potentially jeopardize individuals or operations. Most wars that are started by democracy involve lies. What's really important about WikiLeaks is that the Russian government has engaged in espionage against Americans. WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. We've already begun to step up our efforts, and uh, whenever a case can be made, we will seek to put some people in jail. I am sure that the whole House will welcome the news this morning that the Metropolitan Police have arrested Julian Assange. In some cases, one classified video can possibly stop a war. He's incredibly incisive, uh, incredibly curious, funny, engaging, caring, um, extremely interesting, uh, loving. He cares about humanity. He cares about doing good in the world. أيام صعبة تنتظر أسانج في بالمارشا. سجن مشدد الحراسة ومخصص لأكثر السجناء خطرا. هذه هدية لندن. لرجل الحقيقة في أيار مايو عام 2019 سيحكم على أسانج بالسجن خمسين أسبوعا لخرقه شروط الكفالة On World Press Freedom Day it's important that we consider the free speech ramifications of this case and what it means for journalists and media organizations everywhere يستأنف المحامون لكن من دون جدوى فيبقى سجينا وحده في زنزانة من دون تهمة سوى إزعاج الحليف الأهم لبريطانيا الولايات المتحدة As we heard inside the court, this case is an outrageous affront to journalistic protections This indictment will place a chilling impact and will affect journalists and publishers everywhere all over the world by the US seeking to extradite and prosecute a publisher outside of the US who is not a US citizen for having published truthful information about the United States evidence of war crimes, human rights abuse, and corruption the world over. Every day is, is a struggle, but he's a very strong person. And he's very driven by his sense of justice, his sense of being right, his sense that he has enormous support behind him, which he does. But the fact is that a prison is a is a place that slowly kills you. You put an animal in a cage and they don't live very long. Um, and with human beings, it's the same thing. He has health problems from having been, even before he went into the embassy, inside an apartment for seven years without any outside space, without any sun, without any fresh air. There is no doubt that his health has deteriorated very badly. Um, he looks very, very thin. Uh, the colour of his skin is very bad. He's, he's lost a lot of weight. His face is, um, is droopy. Uh, his eyes look dead. The, you know, he's not... Sometimes in the court, it was obvious he couldn't understand what was happening. And, and this is one of the most intelligent men I've ever met. But he, he just was not, was not there. Uh, you know, he just couldn't, mm. couldn't tell what was happening to him. Um, I've seen him uh, limping heavily, uh, going into and out of court, um, and he's not able to survive it. You know, it, it. It is plain to me that if he is kept there much longer, he, he will die. I'm not saying about poisoning him or whatever, they don't have to. They, they're keeping him in conditions in which he cannot live. Obviously, it's been uh, very difficult to see uh, 
Julian here and to make our way through the, the prison to get to him was quite um, shocking and difficult. Um, he does not deserve to be in a supermax prison. He has never committed a violent act. He's an innocent person. This is just misrule of law and operation. It is absolute shock because it's unfair. He's, a, he's, he's sacrificed so much to bring the truth out and we deserve the truth. And that's all I can say. I'm sorry, I'm just feeling, feel, I feel sick. <laughs> I feel um, I have visited to Julian in, in the Belmos prison, uh, that horrible place. And every, it's, every time you go in there, you, you basically, uh, it takes a couple of days to recover from the shock of, uh, of, of that visit. Uh, not just because of the, uh, the blatant injustice that is uh, brought uh, uh, against Julian, but the simple fact that a Belmos prison is a horrible place. Uh, it is a place that was built for hardened criminals, for murderers, uh, for terrorists. Uh, and to throw in an intellectual, uh, nonviolent individual and have him spend time there is just an absolute travesty of, of justice and goes against every principles we have in the book. تتلاحق التطورات القضائية في منتصف أيار مايو 2019 تعيد السويد فتح تحقيق في مزاعم الاغتصاب ضد أسانج لكنها سرعان ما تسقط للدعاء أما في بريطانيا فتبدأ جلسات البحث في تسليم أسانج للولايات المتحدة والدعوة سعيه للحصول على معلومات سرية ونشرها كل هذا ولا تزال معاناة جوليان تزداد داخل السجن. We're very concerned about Julian Assange's mental health. Um, he suffers from a, a number of very serious issues, which we heard evidence about in court uh, during his extradition proceedings. So he experiences PTSD, depression, uh, auditory hallucinations, a sleeping disorder, and other issues. He's also on the autistic spectrum. He has Asperger's, uh, which makes aspects of his detention more difficult as well. I visited him with two medical experts who came to the conclusion that had he had been exposed to psychological torture for a, a prolonged period of time, and that's a medical assessment. Unfortunately, none of the involved states has, have agreed to conduct an investigation, although that is their obligation under the Convention on Torture. Neil Smelter's report, the rapporteur's report, was that Julian had suffered up until that stage seven and a half years of psychological and physical torture. Um, and that report was sent to the United Kingdom government and to the Swedish uh, government. Neither of those signatories to the human rights legislation, to the conventions of asylum, not, and to the United Nations, founding members of the United Nations, Neither of them obeyed nor took seriously the United Nations officer and his report. The United States, I have no doubt, will put him in the harshest possible position of isolation. And the doctors that assessed him have concluded that such isolation would be so oppressive that it would drive him to commit suicide. He's currently in the healthcare ward because of the significant impact upon his health as a result of the long-term confinement inside the embassy and now inside prison. Uh, he's under a huge amount of pressure and we're very concerned about him. يدافع فريق أسانج عن موكلهم بحجة تدهور صحته قبل أن يلجأوا إلى نقطة دفاع أخرى هي مخالفة لندن اتفاقية الاسترداد مع واشنطن التي تنص على منع تسليم الصحفيين فضلا عن تجاوزهما القانون الدولي. The fight has just begun. It will be a long one and a hard one. But we count on the general public to understand the importance of this case and we will fight till victory. في مطلع عام 2021 تحكم القاضية فانيسا برايتزر بأنه لا يجوز تسليم المتهم للولايات المتحدة خوفاً من انتحاره 
Today is a victory for Julian. Today's victory is the first step towards justice in this case. We are pleased that the court has recognized the seriousness and inhumanity of what he has endured and what he faces. But let's not forget the indictment in the U.S. has not been dropped. I call on the President of the United States to end this now. Mr. President, tear down these prison walls. Let our little boys have their father. Free Julian, free the press, free us all. And so that judge um, essentially upheld Julian's appeal. Well done, that judge. The United States then appealed against that judgment. The Americans assured that he would be fine. Do you believe them? No, I do not believe the Americans when they say he would be fine. I've seen too much of the American prison system and uh, I've seen too much of their ridiculous um, multi-life sentences that are given to people uh, to believe that he will be anything but in prison for uh, the rest of his life and with a prison sentence which extends well beyond his natural life. The American government has made such assurances before and they have broken those assurances. They actually entail in those assurances the clause that they can change their mind at any moment. So it's not worth anything. These so-called assurances, diplomatic assurances, are anything but assurances. They are absolutely and totally worthless. Uh, we can go to the, the, through them point by point. You know, they are say that he could serve uh, his sentence if uh, sentenced in Australia, which is simply uh, uh, not true according to the process because you have to exhaust all your, your options in the, in, in the United States before you can even apply for that. Um, and that could take 10, 15 years. They say that he was not, would not be placed in supermax prison in Colorado. Well, I mean, there are lots of supermax prisons or prisons that, that offer the same kind of hell holes uh, as the one in Colorado. They say that they will not uh, put him in 24-7 uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, detention without meeting and seeing anybody under the so-called uh, special administrative measures, which is the, uh, the, the beautiful way of, of calling something like an innocent name. They call it SAMS. Uh, this regime... Uh, Sam is basically torture by isolation. It's not an insurance policy, it's nothing. And everybody who has analyzed these assurances, so-called assurances, uh, have called it out for what it is. It's a bluff, it's a facade. It's my strong view that Julian Assange will not, cannot receive a fair trial in the United States, but he cannot receive a fair trial especially in the Eastern District of Virginia, which is the federal court that he would be sent to. Uh, the reason is, is the same reason that any national security defendant can't get a free trial there. Uh, it's because it's the home of the CIA, it's the home of the Pentagon, it's the home of the Department of Homeland Security, and a jury in the Eastern District will be made up of people who work for or who have friends and relatives who work for the CIA, the FBI, the Defense Department, the Homeland Security Department, or any number of intelligence community contractors. It would be literally impossible to seat a jury that doesn't have some preconceived notion about guilt in a national security case. Nobody wins against the CIA. Nobody wins against the FBI and the Justice Department. They win 98.2% of their cases. لا تستمر الفرحة بقرار منع التسليم طويلا فالمحاكم البريطانية تعود لتتصرف كالحكومة وتبدأ تضييقا كبيرا على المحامين والمنظمات المعنية فتتعقد إجراءات المحاكمة أكثر فأكثر we had extensive problems in securing access to the various steps of the legal proceedings in the UK there is something um, that needs to be called into question in terms of 
open justice, the right to fair trial in the UK proceedings, that it has been so difficult. We did manage to fight our way in, and I don't use that term lightly because it was quite literally at some points of fight. We were left to have to queue uh, for hours each morning for very few spaces in the public gallery. The UK courts in question have not um, have not recognized the important role that NGO observers can play in ensuring open justice. And so it's been very difficult. We're shocked to find out that our court observer has been denied access uh, to the court online. Uh, this is Amnesty's bread and butter. Uh, we conduct trial monitoring all over the world, uh, week in, uh, week out, and indeed are recognized internationally as an accredited uh, international uh, trial, fair trial uh, observer. Journalism is not a crime! Free journalism! I've been to almost every day of his court appearances uh, throughout the process. Uh, and I have been completely disgusted. I, I have been astonished by the open bias of the courts and the judges. They're not even pretending uh, to listen uh, to, to what the defence says. And um, on the very, his very first appearance in court, when they took him out of the Ecuadorian embassy, the judge called him a narcissist. At, at that stage, he had not said anything at all. He had not said one word. He hadn't opened his mouth. You know, that, that's the very definition of prejudice. You know, that, that is not an unbiased judge. And, and that, frankly, has been typical of the whole process. You know, I've seen situations where um, the judge, and I've seen this with my own eyes, the judge walks into the court and has their ruling on a point ready typed out for them before they have heard the arguments. Um, so, uh, and I've seen that. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, the process is fake. It's not a genuine judicial process. And am I shocked to see this in the United Kingdom? Yes, I'm shocked to see it. Yeah. ترفض محكمة وستمنستر الابتدائية الإفراج بكفالة عن السانجا فيما تواصل الولايات المتحدة حربها عليه وتطعن في قرار منع تسليمه والهدف سحبه إلى أراضيها هناك تنتظره عقوبة قد تصل إلى 175 عاماً بناء على 18 تهمة ضده Julian Assange is not serving any sentence Julian Assange has just won his case two days ago why he remains in prison um, Julian's uh, security is looked after by the uh, administration of the jail in the beginning, they were particularly concerned with Julian's security and uh, uh, assert that that was one of the reasons why Julian was removed into the health wing, which the prisoners themselves called the hell wing. The circumstances in there are isolation, and this, of course, is very unhealthy for anybody and pushed Julian into uh, a depression. The prisoners themselves took up a petition to have Julian removed from the health wing, which failed. So they took up another petition, a total of three petitions by the prisoners were sent to the governor of the jail and eventually Julian was moved into the over 50s wing where he has been uh, since that time, since 2019. <laughs> تظاهرات كبيرة في عواصم ومدن ومحاضرات وندوات سياسية وثقافية وأخرى فنية ينظمها محموه والمؤيدون لقضيته تتجمع الحشود أيضا أمام مباني السفارات ولا سيما الأسترالية والأمريكية والبريطانية والجميع يطالب بحرية أسانجا what they're doing is they're going after Julian Assange, but it's also a message to every other journalist and publisher that if you upset the powerful, you come out with unassailable truth, that you will be uh, an object of their attack and wrath. Therefore, we want to free Julian Assange and no way have him extradited to the United States for the crime of telling us the truth. Week has been awarded, so, you know, more than two dozen awards. I have had to go around the world to pick up some throughout the years uh, on behalf of Wikis and on behalf of Julian. Julian has won uh, the Walkley Award, which is the Pulitzer Prize in, uh, of, of Australia. Uh, 
media awards have been showered upon Wikileaks for its achievement. It's uh, my great, great pleasure to present you with the Sydney Peace Medal for your conviction that truth matters and that justice depends on it and for your courage and leadership and tenacity in journalism and publishing. The real value of this award and the Sydney Peace Foundation is that it makes explicit the link between peace and justice. It does not take the safe, feel-good option of shunning controversy by uttering platitudes. تواصل المنظمات الدولية جهودها للمطالبة بحرية أسانج لكن من دون جدوى كما يشارك مشاهير ومؤثرون وفنانون في حملات التضامن I live on this planet and they're destroying it and part of them destroying it is to incarcerate Assange Assange is absolutely vital to the survival of this planet in, That's it and that's enough for me because I have children and grandchildren and I care about all my brothers and sisters. So for these assholes to destroy the planet, and Assange is a very important part of how to stop them. So that's why, that's why they're locking him up. We can get, at least talk to people who are, have these misconceptions and explain to them that no matter what you think of Julian Assange, this has to do with their freedom for information that has to do with journalism, that has to do with journalism that just isn't about entertainment and has to do with give, having an informed public. Because once this goes, we're really dead. يخطو زعيم حزب العمال السابق جيريمي كوربن خطوة أخرى نحو أسانجا ويرى أن على سلطات بلاده أن تعارض تسليمه للولايات المتحدة وينظم زيارة دعم وإسناد لمؤسس ويكيليكس في سجنه. I'm really anxious about the impact this can have on Julian Assange's health. To be held for 20 hours a day within a prison cell, to be denied elements of association as well, as regular as he should have and wishes, I think is, is barbaric. And it's a reflection, I think, on our prison system overall, but the particular treatment of Mr Assange too. I'm hoping that the hearings in the coming months will secure his freedom. There is no need for him to be locked up in a place like Belmarsh. During your leadership, have you raised his bribe to the British Prime Minister? Yes, but only once. There is an issue about raising stuff in Parliament uh, that is in front of a court, uh, because if there is a court process in operation, Parliament cannot discuss uh, any anything to do with the court. There has to be a separation of political and legal responsibilities. But I did raise Julian Assange's case with Boris Johnson in um, 2020, March 2020. Johnson gave a very interesting reply and not the one that I expected at all. What he said was that the extradition arrangements between Britain and the USA were unbalanced, i.e. unfair, in that it gave too much power to the United States in comparison to the power of Britain to extradite somebody accused of criminal activity who's gone from Britain to the USA. This deep disparity with the US is about to be laid bare when the courts decide whether the WikiLeaks publisher Julian Assange will be extradited to the US on charges of espionage for exposing war crimes, the murder of civilians and large-scale corruption. Will the Prime Minister agree with the parliamentary report that's going to the Council of Europe that this extradition should be opposed and the rights of journalists and whistleblowers upheld for the good of all of us? Speaker, I, I, to be frank, I think the Honourable Gentleman has a point in his uh, characterisation of our extradition arrangements with the United States, and I do think uh, that there, is a, there are elements of that uh, relationship that are unbalanced, and I, cert uh, imbalanced, I certainly think that it is worth looking at. I am Julian Assange. Max, why don't you tell yeah. me how we go to see Daddy? Noble, yeah. Uh, look, Noble. 
We take a taxi. Uh, yes, and then? Take Daddy. How do we get to Daddy? Uh, well, we go into the house and get into Daddy's place and then and then go through special doors. Yes. Get ice cream. No. You go out the special doors. You also got and the then you get the ice cream. And mama. then there's a place and then we go through the door, get our number, and then we see Daddy. Yeah, we get numbers, we have to get through lots of doors, we have to take off our jackets, right? And our yes. shoes. تتفاقم الصعوبات على أسانج ولا تستطيع أسرته زيارته بسهولة وفي أيار مايو عام 2020 يؤجل القاضي جلسة الاستماع بسبب جائحة كورونا أما جوليان فيعزل نفسه في زنزانته خشية الإصابة بالفيروس Yesterday Julian and I were permitted to embrace for the first time in 17 months Throughout my visit in Belmarsh I held his warm hand. Julian has been denied the love and affection of his family for so long. Julian and the kids will never get this time back. This shouldn't be happening. Julian has asked me to thank all of you for coming and for continuing to fight for his freedom. Every European nation, its parliament, has supporters for Julian Assange. Every nation in South America, led by President of Mexico, Obrador, has support in their parliaments for Julian Assange. This indicates massive worldwide support amongst peoples. Free Julian Assange! في مطلع عام 2021. تعلن أستراليا أن مواطنها حر في العودة إلى بلاده عندما ينتهي من المحاكمة لكن الخطوة الأكثر جرأة وحتى إثارة للغضب الأمريكي كانت عرض المكسيك اللجوء السياسي على أسانجا بويا تدير للسكرتارية للرلاسيون السكتريورية كاغا لسترامتس كورسبوندينتس para que se solicite al gobierno del Reino Unido la posibilidad de que el señor Assange quede en libertad y que México le ofrece asilo político. سيؤدي تراكم اللجوء والاعتقال والسجن إلى إصابة أسانج بجلطة دماغية خفيفة في نهاية تشرين الأول أكتوبر عام 2021 ما يتسبب بفقدانه الذاكرة مؤقتا وترهل جفنه الأيمن You know, this hanging over Julian's head is, is you know, just increases the pressure on him now. Um, so, yeah, we live in fear that, uh, you know, he won't make it through this or that, uh, that he will die, basically, um, during this process. Belmarsh Prison keeps the prisoners in their cells locked up for many hours a day. Uh, he's... Just the physical aspect is an enormous burden uh, and a... a downward trajectory uh, for any person. In October, he suffered from a mini stroke, which was induced partly by stress, but also by the fact that he's been locked up for so long. And obviously, it's, it takes an enormous toll on him psychologically as well. Actually, I don't want him deported. Of course, I don't. But I would rather he was allowed to stay in Britain on the basis of his right as a journalist rather than the health conditions. Mm -hmm. The health conditions are important and they're a very important argument for obvious reasons, but I think the principle should be his right to be able to work as a journalist. 
في العاشر من كانون الأول ديسمبر من عام 2021 يلغي القضاء البريطاني الحكم السابق برفض تسليم أسانج للأمريكيين ويتفاقم المأزق An extradition to the country that plotted to kill Julian, that plotted to kill a publisher because of what he published. يتعرض جوليان لاغتيال سياسي واضح بدلالة اللا قانون بريطانيا واضحا يخول القضاء إبقاءه في بالمارشا. The difficulty we have is that this is a political case, and the way the um, governments involve. involved talk about it is as if it were a legal case because they're never going to acknowledge it's a political case في الرابع عشر من اذار عام 2022 ترفض المحكمه العليا البريطانيه استئناف اسانج وفريق دفاعه على تسليمه لواشنطن We will fight every generation has an epic fight to fight and this is ours because Julian represents the fundamentals of what it means to live in a free society of what it means to have press freedom of what it means for journalists to do their jobs without being afraid of spending the rest of their lives in prison مع ان المشهد يزداد قتامه على رجل الحقيقه يسمح له بالزواج بشركته ستيلا موريس في السجن Well, the ceremony was very small. It was just the kids, uh, my mother and my brother, and Julian's father and his brother, uh, and two guards. It was a small room, uh, not much bigger than this. Uh, the ceremony, there were actually two parts. Um, there was a, a civil Part, and then there was a Catholic blessing. It was, it was really nice. It was like we weren't in a prison at all. Everything just stopped. Nothing else mattered. Um, it was just, you know, Julian and me standing in front of each other, holding each other's hands, speaking, looking into each other's eyes. Um, so we could have been anywhere. Only allowed to have six people at the at their wedding, and um, I was very proud to be uh, invited by uh, Julian and Stella to be one of the six. I, you know, I, I, I was honored that they think me so close a friend as to invite me that way. Two days before the wedding, I was informed uh, that I was not allowed to go by the prison authorities, that um, they had ruled that uh, essentially because I was a journalist, um, I was a danger to the security of the prison, though exactly, exactly how, I am really not, not quite sure how I can be the danger to the security of a maximum security prison. Uh, in fact, you know, in a sense, I was quite flattered they think I am such a danger, but um, it, it was, of course, very, very sad to, to not be able to, uh, to be there. But anyway, I turned up anyway to stand outside and at least support them. And then in the evening, we had a, a small gathering at Stella's. house uh, where I was able to uh, to join in without Julian of course it was very nice to be surrounded by family he was he came in we were all inside the room and then he came in and he hugged everyone he hugged his father he hugged his brother and, and my mom and my brother and it was just a moment of of normality because we never ha have that whenever I see Julian it's in this big visitors hall with another 25 prisoners sitting with their families and their visitors. It's an enormous hall, you know, you can't hear anything and, and it's very impersonal and this was a small room and it just felt so, it felt really special to be in a small place where we could just move around freely and hug and, and not have someone come and tell you, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. Um, We're just treated like human beings for 45 minutes, an hour maybe. Hey, give me the sign! Hey, give me the sign! 
Well, supporters gathered, and uh, Stella Morris, um, Julian's uh, now Julian's wife, um, came out. There was a, a cake cut. There were celebrations insofar as you can. Um, but but the real story of uh, the wedding day is that every possible obstruction was put in the path of Julian and Stella getting married by the prison authorities. It was only the prison authorities that could take a picture. They will only give them um, a single copy, a single hard copy of that picture. Um, they haven't received that yet. They're not allowed to publicise it. They're not allowed to put it on, uh, on social media or in the press. Why? Um, because I'll tell you why. what this is all about. It's about the fact that the prison authorities don't want Julian Assange portrayed in a sympathetic light. They don't want him to be seen as a hordin, an ordinary human being like you and I, who falls in love, gets married in the same way that the rest of us do. They want to demonise him. They want to, to pretend that he's some uniquely dangerous person. That's why he's in Belmarsh. When we went there by car, uh, the family, uh, we said, well, we have to try to drag this out as much as possible to spend the maximum amount of time with Julian. Uh, so we, we had a plan that we were going to just have um, improvised speeches uh, throughout the wedding. So, so that's what happened when we were there. We, my, my brother got up and he said, actually, I want to say something. And then he said something. And then at another point, my mom said, oh, I want to add something too. And, and that way we, we made it very, uh, a bit longer than it was going to be and also quite fun and and spontaneous. It, it was very, it was very sweet. What about the kids? The kids, well, the kids were, uh, the little one fell asleep on the chair. <laughs> he just, with his head on the chair and just um, standing on the side and then his head on the chair. And, uh, and Gabriel was, he couldn't sit still, so he was running around and, and of course we were just focused on Julian and I were just focused on each other, but uh, the guard had to run after Gabriel because he kept on trying to get the um, the alarm button that's on the wall, and it was just high enough for him to be able to press it. So of course he saw a button, he wanted to press it. Um, so that was quite funny as well. Thank you. Thank you guys. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm very sad. He's the most amazing person in the world. He's wonderful. And he should be free. It is solely a matter for the Home Secretary, for Priti Patel, to make a decision. In that decision, she has to take into account all aspects of his case not the narrow decision on the appeal or not on his medical grounds, but all aspects of the case, including the effects on press freedom, political effect here, the effect on the individual, the effect on diplomatic relations between Britain and the USA. There's a whole range of issues. لكن وزيرة الداخلية السابقة بريتي باتل لم تأخذ أي من هذه العوامل بالاعتبار لتقرر في حزيران يونيو عام 2022. الموافقة على تسليم أسانجا وذريعتها أن التسليم لا ينتهك حقوق الإنسان وأن أسانج سيتلقى معاملة مناسبة في الولايات المتحدة ينفجر الشارع غضبا على القرار well, it's an abuse trial. It's just an abuse. Also, it's extraterritorial application of laws. Also, the First Amendment. Julian is a publisher, a publication is WikiLeaks, and a journalist. It's an oppression of journalism and free press everywhere in the Western world. It can't go on. It has to stop now. We, if we want to live in a democracy, we have to do something. It just, it doesn't just happen. We have to stand up and we have to get up on our legs and do something. Otherwise, we don't have any democracy anymore. He has done no more than tell the world the truth. 
about military planning, military policies, and the horrors of wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. It is a disgrace to this country and to freedom of speech all around the world. The next step is to seek permission to appeal in the High Court of this country. We will appeal it all the way, if, if we need to, to the Supreme Court. If we're unsuccessful there, we will seek to appeal to the European Court of Human Rights because this case is so important, not just for Julian, but for all media workers, all journalists, all editors in this country. في محاولة أخرى وليست أخيرة يقدم فريق أسانج طلب استئناف إلى المحكمة الأوروبية لحقوق الإنسان لمنع تسليمه للولايات المتحدة ما يفتح الباب على حرب قضائية جديدة The decision of the European Court with respect to the Rwanda deportations demonstrates the power of the European Court of Human Rights and its ability to step in to prevent grave injustice يترافق ذلك وحملة ضغوط فرنسية ومكسيكية وأسترالية وأمريكية جنوبية ويصدر أكثر من بيان للمطالبة بالإفراج عنها. I some time ago made my point that enough is enough. It is time for this matter to be brought to a conclusion. In that I don't uh, express any personal sympathy with some of the actions of Mr. Assange. I do say, though, uh, that this issue has gone on for many years now. But in the appeal, finally, in an appeal court, Julian will have the opportunity to bring forth the entire arguments that this is a political case, he will bring forth the fact that the, the, the institution that is going to uh, have a say in his fate in, uh, in uh, 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 the prison conditions in the United States, if he's extradited, is the same institution that was planning to kidnap or even assassinate Julian in the embassy, as we now know. This has never been heard in, in a court in, 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 in London. We will hear about the witness, the FBI infamous key witness, that has now came forward and actually withdrawn uh, the testimony which uh, many accounts in the indictment are based upon. We will hear all the arguments. Basically, it's going to be the airing of the dirty laundry of the United States government, because there's plenty of evidence that has been gathered in Madrid in the part of the court case there, the spying operations in the embassy, the, uh, uh, the, the journalistic work exposing the kidnap or, or assassination plots that were carried out by the CIA and are based on more than 30 sources, according to the journalists. And the list goes on and on. وسط اختبار حقيقي لمبدا حريه الصحافه، يتغير سلوك بعض وسائل الاعلام التي تركت اسانج يواجه مصيره، ومنها صحيفه الجارديان البريطانيه. In a, in a political case like this, um, the case is won 50% in the courtroom and 50% in the court of public opinion. It's not true that the judges and the politicians don't take account of the surrounding political atmosphere, of what's being said in the press, of how much support or otherwise uh, a figure like Julian has. So we're creating the conditions under which it's more difficult uh, for the judges to support extradition than it would be otherwise. The whole knack in a campaign like this is to make it more politically painful for them to go ahead with the extradition than it is for them to drop the extradition. There were many crimes exposed in the published cables, including crimes against journalists, um, but other crimes too, war crimes, other human rights violations. Again, these are issues that are in the public interest. The public has a right to know the behavior of the US government and other officials that were exposed in this way. We also have to ask ourselves why, more than 10 years on, none of those crimes have been prosecuted. There's been no movement, actually, to hold anybody accountable for any of the wrongdoing that was exposed. The only person being prosecuted here is the publisher, and that is alarming. لم تكن ويكيليكس بعيدة من مصير مؤسسها ليتعرض موظفوها لمضايقات كبيرة وموقعها لمحاولات اختراق. There is an absolute determination that we see by action 
uh, and actually written statements to erase Wikileaks from the face of the earth. That means erase Julian, the rest of us working there, and the entire concept. And I'm going to make sure that's not going to work on my watch. تنسيش إنه ويكيليكس عوقبت فورا من قبل الإدارة الأمريكية بأنها حرمت من كل مصادر التمويل الحر الذي كان فعلا يصل إليها وكان يمكن أن يصل إليها لأجل تعزيز هذا النوع من العمل الصحفي لا يستطيع أي صحفي في الغرب أن يقول ما يريده لأن ما يكتبه يتعلق فقط بمدير التحرير هو الذي يوافق أو لا يوافق على الخبر هذا شيء مؤكد لقد جبهته في العديد من الصحف التي عملت معها في انجلترا وفي فرنسا وفي ايطاليا والتي تتعارض اذا كان الكلام يتعارض مع سياسه الصحيفه او وكاله الانباء يحذف المقطع او يحذف الخبر باكمله مهما كان مهما او جدي جديا او صالحا او من الممكن ان يضيف الواي uh, he told the American people something that they had the right to know. But what is different from what Julian Assange did compared to what any national security journalist does at the Washington Post or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal? He did their work for them. Why didn't they develop that information? Why didn't they tell us that innocent people were being murdered in cold blood? Why did we have to rely on Julian Assange to tell us? He, he has always believed that what you have to do is give ordinary people the truth about what government is doing, and truth is, is very powerful. We've been doing the wrong thing, and we were caught at it. I repeat, we've been doing the wrong thing, and we were caught at it. We keep doing the wrong thing, and we don't admit that we're doing the wrong thing. Something has, has to be cleaned and washed and washed. Something has to be repented. There has to be a change fundamentally in the approach to government. I have a very good Assange was a man of the Ummah. He has to have the Himaye, the Hassani, the Tadir. And if there is a man of the Ahrar in this world, he has to be a man of the Ahrar in this I very much hope one day he will see this film and know how real journalists value everything that he has done. He is a world historic figure who will be remembered. He was a man of the people in a time when there were not many men to be found, only empty raincoats. Julian Assange is a man, a real man. A person can be very strong when they have their family around them when they have the support and love of their family, uh, when they know there's a lot of support out there for them as well. And he, he takes a lot of strength from that. Information is power. Julian gave us all some power through his information. What's your direct message to Assange? Julian, two things. Thank you for all the work you've done. Thank you for your humanity, your decency, and your courage. And be aware, there are not just thousands, but millions around the world that support you. Oh, and I say that uh, for when I see Julian in person. Thank you. We are still fighting for you. you know, we are all still out here. We are we're all fighting to, to win. I think you have a wonderful legal team. Um, uh, we're not going to give up and we're going to be with you the whole way. I think I would say to him to, to be strong, um, that I hope that he knows that many people are campaigning um, in his support around the world and that um, I, I hope that he, he does make this through and that one day we can have this conversation in person with him as a free man. We will fight as hard as we can to get him out and that he should be sustained, however difficult his circumstances are, by the knowledge that um, hundreds of thousands of people the globe over know that this is a fight for the freedom of the press. Don't change. Keep strong. 
Freedom is probably the most valuable thing that we all have. So we owe him a lot. You can kill an individual, you can kill individuals, you can kill a th thousands of people, but you cannot kill an idea. An idea is strong and will live on. To Julian, I love you and I won't stop until you're out. True democracy is not the White House. True democracy is not Canberra. True democracy is the resistance of people armed with the truth against lies. Every day, ordinary people teach us that democracy is free speech and dissent. For true democracy is the sum, is the sum of our resistance. على الرغم من إجراءات التقاضي غير المنصفة وسنوات اللجوء والسجن لم يقبل أسانج أي هزم أخلاقيا بل بقي شاهدا على كل المراحل مصرا أن يدفع ثمن الحقيقة حتى لو كان باهظا Stay strong, you will be free. You are the greatest journalist of our time. History will remember you forever, no matter what happens. But I know I'm positive that you will be free. Because your freedom is our freedom. تبقى حقيقة واحدة ثابتة للتاريخ هي أن جوليان أسانج قاوم وانتصر في وجه الإمبراطورية. People often ask, what can I do? The answer is not so difficult. Learn how the world works. Challenge the statements and intentions of those who seek to control us behind a facade of democracy and monarchy. Unite in common purpose and common principle to design, build, document, finance and defend. Learn, challenge, act now.